Good morning, pre-calculus class. So uh, this one is for uh, section 7.4, the continuation of chapter 7. So today's Thursday, and uh, it's due to pandemic time. So now let's take a look at that, some of the uh, problems. So you guys want to start with the warm-up for this section here, so go ahead. So this section is all about finding the inverses of a trigonometric uh, function. So let's say that the ratio is given, you want to find out the actual angle. Okay, so or the combination with the composition, so you'll see that in a minute. So here are some of the refresh for things that you learned from Algebra 2. So the way to find the inverse, once again, you want to swap the xy variable. And then after that, you want to solve for y in terms of x. So if the function is considered linear, so the inverse is also going to be linear as well. If the function is considered radical, so the inverse most likely is going to be considered quadratic. If the function is considered quadratic, so the inverse function eventually is going to be considered radical. So the line of symmetry of the original function and the inverse, it's always with respect to the line of symmetry along y equals x. If you guys do remember that. So now let's start it off with uh, section 7.4. Okay, so inverse trigonometric function. So for the inverse function, remember the inverse function looks like f of x equals y. So then inverse of f of x. The negative 1 is not the exponent. It's just considered the indicator for the inverse. So it's the inverse of f, uh, f of x. So that equals x. So basically, we just swap the xy value or swap the xy variables. So let's say that we do have f of x equals 2x plus 1. So we write it in terms of y and x. And then the way to find the inverse, we swap the variable. So x equals 2y plus 1. And then solve for y in terms of x. Subtract 1 both sides and then divide it by 2. So we do have the inverse function. So now what about the inverse trigonometric functions? So the function y equals sine of x has the inverse denoted by y equals inverse of sine of x. Or y equals arc sine of x. So you see that indicator negative 1 up there. And also the arc, that means, basically they mean the exact same thing. So now, to look at that original graph for sine of x. So you may notice, so sine of x is always considered a roller coaster. It's just the parent graph of sine of x. And then the domain for this one is from negative pi to pi. Well, obviously, for sine, it's a continuous, it's a continuous function. It goes all the way from negative infinity to infinity. But the thing is that we want to put in certain kind of restriction here. So let's say that the domain is just from negative pi to pi. And then the range is from negative 1 to 1. Now, what about the inverse? What about its inverse function? So inverse of sine of x. So inverse of sine of x. So basically, we just want to swap the domain and the range. So instead of using that negative pi to pi, we're using that negative 1 to 1 for the domain. And then the range would be negative pi to pi. But the thing is that if you try to do the vertical line test through the graph here, so you see the graph would be intersecting with the line at two points. So we need to put in certain kind of restrictive value for the range. So you'll see that in a minute. And also, as what I mentioned earlier, the line of symmetry regarding the original graph and the inverse, it's always y equals x. So the green dotted line here, it's y equals x, which is the line of symmetry. So now, here's a definition for the actual inverse sine of x. So y equals inverse of sine of x. If and only if. So anytime they see the phrase like if and only if, going back to geometry, it's a biconditional statement. So sine of y equals x and negative pi over 2, it's less than or equal to x, and it's less than or equal to pi over 2. So this one is just giving you the restrictive value for the range. Okay? So from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Well, the reason why that is, because we want to satisfy the vertical line test for the inverse functions. So remember the vertical line test, if the line touches the graph at one point only, so that means the graph is a function. If the line touches the graph at more than one point, so that means the graph is not a function, it's just a relation. Okay, so now let's take a look at that, some of the example, the way to evaluate inverse of sine. So inverse of sine of zero, going back to the unit circle, you can see that it's zero or pi on the unit circle. Again, the given value here, they're just considered the ratios. So now, anytime you find inverse, that means you want to find out the actual angles, the original angles, or the original radian of the angle. So we got 0 and pi on the unit circle. What about for arc sine of 1? So in other words, that inverse of sine of 1, 
So inverse of sine of 1, so on the unit circle, so we do have negative pi over 2. Uh, actually, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it depends on which way that you want to go through. Uh, but there's a typo right here, negative pi over 2, then that will be considered 270 degree, which is 3 pi over 2. And at that position right there, that would be considered uh, negative 1 for the ratio. So the only solution we have for this one is just pi over 2. And what about inverse of sine of 1.5? According to the graph of sine, so the amplitude for sine is always bounded from negative 1 to 1. So any number that it's exiting uh, 1 or it's less than negative 1. So there's no inverse. So for C, it's undefined. Okay, so now let's take a look at that some other example. So this time you want to use the calculator for this. So once you do that on the calculator, you want to go to second and then inverse of sine. And then you want to put in the ratios. So this one you end up with 0.2610. And the answer for this one is supposed to be a radian, because that's a small decimal. And the other one, R sine of negative 0.91, it's negative 1.1433. And then for the next couple examples there, we're going to talk about why it's being negative. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have. Reflections, so we're not doing that for physics. So this one is physics for reflection. We can skip through this, so using the ratios. So now, let's take a look at that, something else. So now, the one that we just mentioned about inverse of sine of x. So now, what about the, for the inverse of cosine of x? So it's quite similar for inverse of cosine of x. If and only if cosine of y equals x. And for the range, it's bounded from 0 to pi. Again, we need to put in the restrictions so we can satisfy the inverse functions as a, as a valid function. So what about inverse of tangent of x? So inverse of tangent of x, if and only if tangent of y equals x. So the restricted range for inverse of tangent would be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? And now let's find out some of the examples. So determine the exact value for this type of kind of a Vier expression. So anytime that you deal with the ratios, inverse, and then you want to take sine of that inverse of cosine of the ratios, so first thing that you want to find out, so inverse of cosine of any ratio, so the boundary is from negative, uh, it's from 0 to pi, according to the definition. So another thing that we know is that cosine of theta, it's considered root 3 over 4. If just rewrite it as the normal trigonometric expression. Again, root 3 over 4, that's just the ratio. So cosine is always considered adjacent over hypotenuse. So one thing that's missing here is the opposite, the length for the opposite. So in order to find out the opposite, we're using the Pythagorean theorem. So solve for y, we do have plus minus root 13. And now which one do we choose? So that's a good question. So it's a positive ratio. And we do know that according to the unit circle, if that's a positive ratio for cosine. So that means it's in quadrant 1. Because according to the restricted range for inverse of cosine is from 0 to pi. So we're choosing the positive ratio. So that's why cosine is cosine theta is greater than zero. So quadrant one. So we're using that ratio. So anytime that we take the inverse of cosine sine tangent, it's always giving you the angle, the reference angle or theta. So this one can be written as sine of theta. So theta it's in quadrant one. So sine of theta according to the ratio, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So since we found the opposite already, so basically we just plug in a number. So it's root 13 over the hypotenuse, which is 4. So this one, it looks kind of a little bit tough, but the thing is that if you think about the way to applying the unit circle, so this one is just finding the ratio again. So eventually, it's going to be the root 13 over 4. And now let's try another one. So R sine of negative 2 over 7. So we do know that inverse of sine, the restricted range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And both negative pi over 2, pi over 2, they're both included. So negative ratio, so that means this one is going to be in quadrant 4. And one thing we noticed, 2 over 7, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. And we need to find out the missing side length for the adjacent. So you try to use the Pythagorean theorem. Adjacent is going to be root 45. So basically this one just finding out cosine of theta in quadrant 4. So it's root 45 over the hypotenuse, which is 7. 
Okay, so we're going to do more rigorous problem like this for one of the chapter review, okay? So stay tuned, and then we're going to be doing something like a little bit more rigorous for this sections. Okay, so try to do some homework for um, 7.4. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. Take care.